I was out diving with my little brother Ian. He was like, hey, I want to see how deep we can go. And I was like, Ian, you're not even a diver. What are you doing? But somehow he dove down to like 45 feet deep and found this weird white thing in the sand. It's actually the skeleton from an urchin. And uh, that's about all that's down here. I looked over at him and he was like, should we go up? I don't know. Do what you want to do. <laughs> loser. Then I proceeded to stay down there and blow the most perfect bubble ring that he's ever seen. Sorry to flex on you Ian, but I guess I'm just a little bit more of a diver than you. I swam up to the surface so that I could take a breath, but my bubble ring was taking its time coming up. So I swam back down and grabbed this dingle hopper from my pile of stuff that I'd picked up on the dive, and I tried to put the dingle hopper into the bubble ring. At first, I was worried that all it would do is destroy the ring, but then it started to go into orbit. Whoa, that thing's spinning! It almost spun into another dimension. Don't worry, I picked it up after. Hey, look, it's my octopus friend, Octavio. He went to hide in his hole and I was like, don't worry, buddy. And I gently massaged him to try to get him to come out of his hole. I tried a couple different finger techniques and then my brother came down and he was like, hey, I want to try. And I was like, yeah, Ian, that's perfect. Use the finger technique that I taught you. It was still pretty difficult and we really needed to get into this hole from multiple angles. Finally, Octavio came out. Bruh, are you holding a piece of glass? Were you trying to shank me? That's not very friendly. My brother had never held an octopus before, so I was really excited to show him. It can be difficult to hand them over because they like to stick on to you so much. Aw, see, you guys can be friends. Bye, Octavio. It's good to see you. On today's dive, I found one of the most deadly killers in all of the ocean. And no, it's not a great white shark or another sea creature. It's this fishing line. This fishing line spread between multiple pieces of coral reef can become attached to a sea creature, which would lead them to a torturous death. I started to remove it piece by piece. And then when I got up to the surface, I saw my brother doing this. Okay, Ian, you could help. So anyways, I went back down and continued to remove the fishing line from all the coral. It's a complicated and difficult job, but I definitely enjoy the challenge. Sometimes I can't get all of it at once, so I just have to leave it down there and take a breath. But what sucks about that is that the waves will literally push it back onto the coral and undo part of my work. So the best way is to just do as much as I can all at once. And ooh, look, a shell. Okay, Ian, you keep working on the fishing line. I'm going to look at my pretty new shell. I showed the shell to Ian and he said, hey, look, there's a hermit crab in here. Ian wanted to play with the hermit crab, so I went to finish the fishing line work. At this point, I was like, forget this. I gotta use my cutting tool. This is way too tangled to try to take off in one breath. I don't want to cut it too much because I don't want a thousand tiny pieces of fishing line, so I made very precise cuts so that I could just pull it out without making a mess. Finally, I got the whole fishing line out, and Ian actually got the hermit crab to climb out of its shell. That almost never happens while you're holding them. That's so cool. On my dive today, I went down to this big debris pile to see what kind of stuff I would see. First, I found these two strings of plastic, but they weren't actually strings. They were just like long pieces of plastic. I don't really know what it is. Then I found somebody's Googles and a zip tie. Then I went over to this other part and I found a piece of fake leather and a dingle hopper. Did the fake leather come from a boat? I'm so confused by some of the stuff that I find underwater. Then I found this golf bowl. Next, I found this piece of plastic from a container and then the lid to a sauce container. And finally, this piece of plastic that I have no idea what it is. I thought I was done, but then I realized there was this fishing line stuck between all these sea urchins. I'll help you out, buddies. The way the fishing line was going right under the sea urchin, I was like, yeah, there's no way I can just grab this without cutting it. So I carefully cut it in a few precise places and was able to clean it off the reef and didn't get spiked by any of the sea urchins. So I've been picking up a lot of trash on my dive and I was like, wait a second, my brother's here. I could just make him go pick up the trash. And so I brought him over and I told him, so, do you can. You go get it. so he dove down and it was like 40 feet deep. Luckily, my brother's good at diving. Good job, Ian. You got the soda can. Then he came up to me and he motioned, hey, let's crack open a couple cold ones, huh? And then he acted like he was drinking it. Glug, 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 glug. My brother is so ridiculous. By the way, people were asking about his weird wetsuit combo. And no, this isn't a women's wetsuit. This is just a free diving wetsuit. I actually wear mine the same way, but I always wear black shorts so you can't really tell. It might look weird, but it's better than wearing it underneath the board shorts, if you know what I mean. Okay, that's all the stuff we saw. Bye!